Hi, I'm Randy Reed, editor of the Edison Report, and welcome to this edition of Light Fast. I'm joined today by Brianne Wilcock, the Director of Education and Standards at the Illuminated Engineering Society, as well as Jeffrey Bristol, Division Vice President, Lighting of NIMRA. Brianne, Jeffrey, welcome, and thank you for joining me. This is your opportunity to kind of uh, pitch this uh, first of its kind stepped education curriculum. Jeff, tell our audience a little bit about the three pillars that NEMRA offers. The three pillars that NEMRA Lighting stands for are the advocacy, the networking, and the education of our members, the agents and the manufacturers. And this is one of the biggest supporters of that educational pillar. So the concept for this idea really came about from my background on the manufacturing side of the business and working with our agencies to train and, and look for ways to educate them that were available in the marketplace and never really having that perfect fit in terms of a collective group of trainings that existed. So when NIMRA Lighting started its journey, one of the things that we didn't want to do was try to reinvent the wheel as it related to some things like training. We were fortunate enough to have an alliance partnership with the IES that developed very quickly. And in discussion with uh, Brianne and Colleen, we really started to discuss and talk about this idea of a stepped education curriculum, something that would allow agencies and manufacturers alike to access a collective group of training that would allow them to gain broader proficiency across every experience level uh, in an agency and or in a manufacturer. So really, it a lot of it came through my past experiences of needing this. And then, of course, the support that IES and Brianne's tremendous knowledge uh, and background in education in really helping us develop it. Okay, excellent. Brianne, um, tell us a little bit about the how you were involved. And from what I understand, much of this training already existed within the portals of IES, correct? Yep. And I, what I really, uh, to echo what Jeff said, what I really appreciate is that the IES has been long known for having a lot of education at our fingertips and a lot of contributors and volunteers who provide that to us. Um, and so what I like about this effort in particular is that it gave us a chance to curate that content for a specific audience to accomplish something that hasn't been accomplished before, which is to have a consistent, um, you know, repeatable curriculum that agents can learn to grow in their lighting knowledge when we know that people who end up in agencies and in sales don't have a consistent background. They don't have a, a consistent college education, um, a specific major, those types of things. So this gave us a chance to curate, you know, um, some content from our 400 plus courses and other things in the background. And then we're really fortunate to have some additional videos that were provided by NEMRA um, specifically for agents, uh, which is great. And so each of the levels is anchored on kind of a core skill building program. And then there's additional modules beyond that. And so it was a good exercise for the IS2 to, to, to be mindful of a specific audience. Jeff, tell us a little bit about level one lighting trained. Absolutely. So the, the curriculum starts out with your basic fundamentals of lighting. So this is going to be a tract uh, that is geared towards somebody who may be new to lighting. It may be uh, somebody who is in a role like a customer service role or an inside sales role, uh, a quotations role. Somebody who really would benefit from a broader understanding of things like terminologies and uh, basic understanding of applications, um, understanding photometrics as an example. All of this basic lighting knowledge that you would want to understand what it is that you're either talking about or selling or quoting now exists in uh, step one, which is lighting trained. And of course, at the end of each of the steps, as a, as a student, you'll receive a certificate of completion from NEMRA Lighting 
that shows that you've completed that step and and now gives you the opportunity if you decide to progress to go to the next. So, Brian, we understand now a little bit about level one, lighting trained. Which IES materials were you using to help create level one? So we actually have a course called Introduction to Lighting. It replaced a previous um, iteration. I think it was called ED50 in the back right. um, years ago. It's kind of that pre-fundamentals of lighting, really basic course. It's actually been on the e-learning portal now for a few years. Um, we haven't used it in a cumulative type sense, in the sense that we haven't put it as a part of a curriculum. We haven't said, here's Introduction to Lighting, now move on to these three things. Because the next things that you may seek out are really related to your profession, your specific role in the lighting industry. So this is the first time we've used it as an anchor to move forward to other things beyond just you know general education. Okay, understood. So Jeff, let's look at level two, lighting educated. Tell our audience a little bit about what that is about. And then Brie, I wanna come back to you to hear where it was curated from. So lighting educated now takes you into the realm of gaining a better understanding of applications um, as well as a little bit, I'm going to say a little bit more of a consultative approach, but more in working with distribution and contractors and end users specifically. So you'll gain a good knowledge of the various types of lighting. You'll gain a very good understanding of basic controls, uh, including network control and, and Bluetooth and things of that nature. But again, it's really geared for that individual that is engaged with contractors, that's engaged with distributors, that's engaged with end users, uh, is, is active in the design build process of the community, and is really going to sharpen their skills and allow them to be much more proficient in that space. Okay, understood. So, Brian, where did that module two come from? So level two has um, a number of different courses that we've had through webinars and through some of our other efforts. But what I like about module two is that, or level two, excuse me, is that the first module is anchored in a series of videos that um, from the lighting exchange that give multiple perspectives of what it's like to work for an agency. So you start off level two with a lot of new information and new vocabulary for different types of agencies, different customer segments within those agencies, why um, certain challenges come about in agencies, things like that. And so as, as each of the levels are, it is anchored in, level two is anchored in a, a core video that you start with first, and then you add to it with additional skill building and vocabulary building. But if you haven't worked for an agency before and the lighting, the model, the sales model and lighting industry is different than a lot of other industries. And so that is unique in that the IS did not have that content before. I'm glad that we were able to collaborate with them or to put it in there because agencies are that perspective. I don't think has been heard in the way that it should. Um, right. The diverse perspective of agents, kind of what their day-to-day -day work is like. I don't think that the IS has spent the effort that we could have in that in that space. And now we have an opportunity to help people build that skill set. Sure. Understood. Okay. Exciting. Tell us about level three, Jeff. Okay. So lighting three, uh, lighting specialized now takes the individual that is either selling or working with the specification community or may want to progress from the uh, contractor end user uh, distributor to the specification community. And level three is gonna really now take that student into understanding the specification cycle, understanding the submittal process, the quotation process, uh, the cradle to grave aspect of working with architects, engineers, specifiers, uh, dealing with situations where you may have a VE. Uh, it, is, it is, again, an inclusive course aimed to increase your knowledge within that world of the specifier, the architect, the engineer to move that project and that job forward. And more importantly, make sure that from a spec perspective, you can work with that group to hold that spec uh, as that job is written. And that's a, I think that's a very important point here. Okay, and Brianne, I think of IES, of course, as the lighting authority, full of great knowledge, but you don't really have a lot of expertise, I think, on bidding. So how do you, how did you put this portion together? It's true, actually. Um, I agree with you. I think that 
in our documents, like our commissioning documents and some of our other standards, some clarity around bidding comes in when you teach people how to write a spec that is solid um, because that's how bidding gets done accurately. So I think that those, that vocabulary, that skill set has been has been distributed through IS content, but it hasn't been kind of blatantly addressed as why why do we have such a problem with bidding in the industry? And what happens when a job gets bid incorrectly? What's your next best step? So level three is great because it starts with lights of the round. And lights of the round is a program with a distributor or an architect, an electrical engineer, um, controls manufacturer. And they that particular program gives you an insight into how they all interact with each other at different stages, even the uncomfortable ones, the value engineering, the bidding, the commissioning, parts where there's a lot of whose fault is it, so to speak. And so what I like about that program, though, is that it's a very candid look at specification and then managing that specification all the way through to installation and commissioning. And so bidding is a part of that process some of that clarity comes to be in that program because you start to see why that process is so important. And then beyond that, there's a number of modules in these levels that help you understand how those teams interrelate. So when we talk about selling light as a service and who's who's actually providing the service and commissioning and through and who's actually representing the owner during the bidding process and how to think about lighting as an integrated system instead of a set of widgets. Um, that understanding in level three is critical because that helps you understand why a small change in bidding or in value engineering or other times can have a, a big impact on the line, not only in your labor costs and installation costs from low voltage to line voltage, things like that, but also in just team dynamics. It affects the team dynamic when value engineering and bidding and other things like that compromise the design intent. And I think agents, um, deserve to understand the landscape of that and, and why so many people get so passionate at different levels of the process. Well, I think your uh, vast experience, of course, as a lighting designer in a prior lifetime yeah. had to be very helpful in putting this together because you've experienced all these things. That's true. Well, and I was, agents have called on me in my past life, right? So I spent nine years, you know, being called on. And I think um, I had some awesome agency partners that were able to really stick with it through the entire process. And, you know, it would be great to see more consistency in agencies in that skill set. Understood. Okay, Jeff, tell our audience a little bit about level four, the lighting professional. So exactly. Lighting professional is the fourth step in the process. And lighting professional now really hones in on the consultative selling approach within the specification and or design community. So you're, you're, now getting to the aspects of talking about the importance of aesthetics uh, as well as performance, looking at lighting layout, looking at controls layout, really dealing with that consultative aspect of selling beyond beyond drafting the specification, if you will. Brianne, tell our audience a little bit about how Level 4 was developed. Level 4's anchoring course is Architecture for Light, um, taught by Kim and Paul Mercier, well-known lighting designers. They really start to give you a sense of how a lighting designer thinks, thinks about architecture, thinks about the spaces that we occupy. And then level four really focuses on building empathy for who you're calling on, electrical engineers, lighting designers, why they talk the way that they do, what their design concepts mean to them, what design narratives look like. And so level four really is meant to push an agent beyond their comfort zone and to really think through how someone else um, feels about a lighting design from start to finish, which is a unique, it's unique to the design community for sure. And, you know, one thing I'll say, Randy, about all four of the steps in the curriculum is that these are extremely comprehensive. Uh, step one, two, three, and four, meaning that you're investing anywhere from eight to 10 hours in these, in each step okay. to be able to move through and gain that certificate of competency. Okay. So what would the total number of hours be ballpark for all four? It's just shy of 37 hours for all four steps all in. Okay. And, may and I it may evolve. I, I should say, Randy, it, it may evolve over time. We may have, we, you know, we welcome feedback on some of the curriculum and there may be things that we um, will supplement 
So if we have, if the IES happens to host an, a webinar that just seems like an excellent fit, it'll be added in and there'll be, there'll be an evolution of how those, how those go. Okay. Uh, Jeff, what is the cost? So as a NEMRA lighting member, steps one and steps two are absolutely free. There is no cost whatsoever. It's part of your membership. And that's both for the agent and the manufacturer. If they're progressing to step three and to step four, what we've asked is that they become a member of IES to be able to unlock those steps, as well as unlock a variety of other training that will be helpful to them. And that obviously supports the mission of making sure that now there's engagement at uh, regional and or chapter IES meetings, uh, being able to benefit from all the additional information and training and material that IES has to offer on their site. So uh, all in all, I would say if you're looking at all four, relatively, you know, very inexpensive. Hey, Jeff, any closing comments? I'm just going to touch base quickly on, on one of the important comments that Brianne had made in that this will be a fluid and, and living curriculum, meaning that as material becomes available or, and this has already happened, we have partners that come to us and say, hey, we would really like to add a broader perspective on emergency lighting, on BAA and BABA, on network control. We now have the ability to leverage from those partners that material that they're providing and either run it into the curriculum or add it as a, you might be interested in this type of a tool. So the opportunities for our members here is endless. They will be able to really dive in and not only complete the curriculum, but find these additional resources that are gonna support their knowledge growth and their proficiency. How old is the NEMRA Lighting Division? The NEMRA Lighting Division is a grand nine months old today. Okay, so I just think about nine months old and look at the value that you are providing to your members. Uh, Brianne, closing comments. I, I've i loved working with Number Lighting Division. I think it's, um, I think that they've been ambitious about education. I appreciate the, the respect for the IS curriculum and kind of our place in education. And so I'm excited about this because in a lot of ways, it's the first true partnership collaboration that the IS has had where we develop a curriculum for a specific audience. And I believe that the heart of a lot of those conversations that agents get to have is so critical to the success of a project that I'm glad that they were able to give them a better vocabulary, um, more resources at their fingertips, more expectations of each other, um, you know, and having some consistency in, in how they think through this process. And I hope it grows for not only our membership and exposes the importance of IES to agents and being a coming an individual member, including at a section level. And I hope it's also a model for other organizations that want to think through how important their audience is to them and what the IES might be able to do to help. Well, I, I, I agree, Brianne. And I'll just tell you, you know, IES and NEMRA are, are two of my personal favorite uh, organizations in our industry and to see them coming together. So many organizations have MOUs. You sign the MOU, you put it in yourself and yeah. not a whole lot of help happens. It's just great. It's kind of a one plus one equal three here. The two organizations working together, just providing a tremendous value. So I want to congratulate you. Uh, Jeff, tell our audience last thing, where can they go to register? The uh, NEMRA Lighting members can actually go on through the NEMRA Lighting portal. Uh, they can register on the portal and then that will take them over to the IS site and uh, where there is a NEMRA Lighting page that they can access all of the content that we've talked about today. Okay, thank you both and congratulations.